chauffeurs, official cars, advisors, secretaries, cell phones, airline tickets, fine offices, hairdressers, butler services and a more than generous salary equivalent to 15 to 20 times the minimum wage per month. This, this is the life of a visual politics host. I'm kidding. It's actually the life of a representative of the people in a country like Argentina, where shockingly almost 50% of the population lives in poverty and where the average salary barely exceeds $300 a month. In other words, my dear friends, if you want to live the Argentine dream, you're going to have to dedicate yourself to politics in the land of the tango, traditional barbecue and of course, financial bailouts. And yes, yes, this is another video about Argentina, a country that is becoming a bit of a pet here on Visual Politic. But what can I say? As they say in those parts, it never stopped giving us letters, which means Argentina just doesn't stop making the news. Its current affairs are non-stop. And my friends, it could be easy to believe, as President Alberto Fernandez usually claims, that all of this about the cost of politics is simply a minor issue or pure demagoguery. Of course, that could be the case if Argentine politicians were not actively responsible for destroying the country while turning Argentina into a kind of five-star resort for the members of their own select club. And keep in mind that we are talking about Argentina, a place where politics weighs much heavier than you can imagine. You see, my friends, Argentina has been in a severe economic recession for three years. In 2018, the economy fell by 2.5%. In 2019, by 2.2%. And in 2020, with the pandemic as well, by 12%. And it's not only about GDP. Practically all of the indicators are bad. Poverty is still on the rise. The public deficit is above 6%. And inflation? Well, as we've already told you here on Visual Politic, Argentinian inflation escapes all economic logic. Health crisis or not, the government keeps hitting the money print press again and again and again and again. Something that in economics is technically called expanding the money supply to infinity and beyond. Well, in spite of all this, Argentine politicians have not been able to make a single solitary gesture. You know, demagoguery. I don't know, maybe the fact that most politicians have almost always lived off the state has caused them to build like a shell, a wall almost, that protects them from the problems that are consuming the country. Because obviously, nothing is ever their fault. Despite all this, some authoritative sources, such as the economist Roberto Chakanowski, have been calling for a drastic reduction in the cost of political structure for some time now. A reduction that would improve the increasingly deteriorating perception of politics while relieving the meagre public coffers. Who knows? Maybe even reduce the bureaucratic and political costs and lower lower the taxes that affect productive activities in one of the countries with the highest corporate taxes in the world. Who knows? Maybe, just maybe, that might be a good idea. Now, is it really possible to reduce the cost of politics in Argentina? What burden are we talking about exactly? What would be the best way to reduce this expense and improve its efficiency? And a no less important question, could closing the five-star luxury resort for Argentine politicians improve the lives of regular Argentines? To find out, let's get cracking. a multi-layered structure. So first of all, a point to keep in mind. Between the 1930s and 1983, Argentina spent half of its time under military dictatorships. In a way, that explains why, once democracy was restored in 1983, anything to do with it was inviolable. It simply could not be criticised. That meant any negative comment was seen as an anti-democratic statement, and politicians, as politicians are wont to do, took advantage of this. However, we are already in the second decade of the 21st century, so I am sorry, but this sensitivity is no longer valid. Criticising a way of doing politics does not mean criticising democracy. On the contrary, opacity, lack of transparency and lack of criticism generate impunity. All of which added together, I'm sure you smart people who watch Visual Politic will know, becomes the best possible cocktail for abuse. But what exactly are we talking about here? So look at it this way. Let's take as a reference the market exchange rate of the Argentinian peso to the dollar. At the time of making this video, the rate was approximately 85 pesos per dollar. That would make the minimum wage around $212 per month. A policeman's is $540 per month, a nurse's is $470, and a teacher's just over $300. According to the National Institute of Statistics, 
statistics and census of Argentina, among the employed population, the average income was $365. And the median income, that is the one that is right in the middle and leaves 50% of the income below and 50% of the income above was only $294. As a comparison, the median salary in Spain is about $1,700, six and a half times higher. And we are only talking about Spain, where salaries are quite low. It's really best not to compare with other countries like France, the United States, or Canada. You see, my friends, these figures from the once richest country in the world are plain and simply bleak. But hold on just one minute, because the situation among politicians, that is somewhat different. But rather than focusing strictly on the data, notice how layered Argentine politics has become, creating a very expensive elephant for the public coffers to maintain. <laughs> In order to not complicate things too much, let's focus on the case of the National Congress, keeping in mind that the situation there is similar to what we can find throughout the rest of the political bodies in Argentina. The National Congress of Argentina consists of a chamber of deputies with 257 members and a senate with 72 representatives. The budget for the National Congress for the year 2021 is just a smidge more than $470 million, which means that each of the 329 representatives will cost Argentine citizens an average of $1,428,500. $71 per year. Although if we go into detail, the cost per senator is actually much higher than that of a deputy. Obviously, these costs include many items of all kinds, such as consultants, catering, or, I don't know, maybe hairdressing. It's true, in fact, the National Congress has had its own hairdressing salon at the disposal of the members of Congress, which is something I've been pushing for here at Visual Politic for a long time. In fact, even once they have fulfilled their mandate under Article 9 of Law 20.984, they can continue to enjoy facilities such as the dining room or the hairdressing salon. <laughs> In terms of salaries, at first glance, things seem less striking. The salary of a congressman or senator is around $2,500 a month, much less, for example, than in Spain. But don't get too distracted here. Remember that we are talking about Argentina, a country where the median salary, as I mentioned, is $265. In other words, the salary of a member of Congress is equivalent to 9.5 average salaries. Using our previous comparison, it would be like a Spanish congressman earning an average of $16,000 each month. But apparently, that's actually not the worst of it. The most striking thing is that 1,470 people work in the Senate, 20 people for each senator, and another 2,161 people work in the Chamber of Deputies, eight for each deputy or member of parliament. In fact, the real cost per deputy, taking into account their own salary, cell phone, assistance, transportation, etc., is about $40,000 per month, 60% more than Spain in absolute terms. And in the case of senators, the figure soars to $140,000 per month, seven times higher than the equivalent cost in Spain. These are all in absolute terms. A relative comparison is genuinely better left unsaid. And even though Spain is three times wealthier than Argentina, it is hardly a role model of an efficient public service. Still, it seems Seems like Argentina wins the prize for taking care of its politicians. The record is held by Senator Roberto Basualdo of the Alianza Cambiemos San Juan with 60 direct team members. He is followed by Luis Naidenoff with 48 employees. Roberto Kachansky, Argentine economist. Of course, as many of you are probably imagining at this very moment, many of these people are relatives, friends, and political collaborators with few or no professional qualifications for the very important advisory work that they are supposed to be doing. And that is not all. According to a report by Cadal, the Center for the Opening and Development of Latin America, the largest staff increases were recorded in other areas of the legislative branch, such as, for example, the Congressional Printing Office, which has, according to the 2018 budget, 679 employees, 18% more than in 2016, despite the fact that we are in the midst of a digital era in which paper printing has been significantly reducing worldwide. For its part, the library has more than 1,700 employees, 80% more than in 2004. That's 1,700 workers for one library. I would love to know what on earth it is they do. Of course, it's more than likely that most of them are simply political members. The big boss hooks them up and then there they stay for life. Faithful public employees of the world's, I presume, best library. Perhaps 
perhaps most surprising of all is that, according to journalist Augustine Carelli, even back in 2019, before the pandemic, Congress barely held any sessions in either the Senate or the Chamber of Deputies. In short, let me say this, it's a real farce. But that was just one example. We have only talked about the National Congress, but the truth is, is that this model of expensive, oversized and meaningless structures is repeated across the board. The size of the state in Argentina is completely out of control. And the result? Well, the result is what you have already seen. A median salary of $265, a state in constant crisis, almost 50% poverty, and taxes that are amongst the highest in the world. So in Argentina, the greatest privileges go to politicians, as we've already seen in a past video here on Visual Politic, which I will link below. Take, for example, the case of Cristiana Fernandez de Kitchener, or CFK, which just saying is making me hungry. And I'm not going to talk about corruption here, at least what is not legally understood as corruption. Federal judge Esquiel Perez Nami authorized the current vice president to collect simultaneously the tax-free life pension to which she's entitled for having previously been president, together with the pension of her late husband, also a former president, along with her current salary as vice president. In total, more than $24,000 each month. That's 100 times the median salary. So do not tell me that she is not onto a good thing. And not only that, the judge has also recognized her entitlement to 1.2 million in subsidy back payments. What a sweet, sweet deal Argentine politics is. But I can't stress enough that the worst thing about Argentina is not the isolated cases, but the country model that the politicians have built for their own benefit. For example, they have used the political strategy of buying votes ad nauseum. And today, between one thing and another, more than half of the population receives some kind of direct or indirect payment from the state, such as salaries, subsidies, and pensions. More than half of the population, which is obviously not all that viable. And it is not a welfare state that has been built in Argentina, but a state of poverty. Poverty in Argentina rose to 44.2% and touches 18 million people. These are data from the Social Debt Observatory of the UCA on the third quarter of 2020. In one year, 2 million new poor people were added. Destitution totaled 10.1%. Ambito. Frankly, I know I've been joking, but let me tell you how truly sorry I am for a country as wonderful as Argentina once was. A country that represented the dream of millions of people who travelled there from Europe in search of freedom and prosperity. The broken dream of what was once the richest and most developed country in the world. As always, we hope you really enjoyed this video. Please hit like if you did, and don't forget to subscribe for brand new videos. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. And if you want to learn more about politics and hear even more of my lovely voice, you can join us at Reconsider Media. We have a podcast at reconsidermedia.com slash podcast. See you there.